Hi, hello. Hello, guys. Very sorry for the delay, some technical moments. I hope you can see and hear me well. While we're gathering, or I hope that some of you have, uh, some of you have already joined our webinar, so please say hello and tell us what cities you are from, where you are now. Hello, colleagues. Hi, hi. Hello from Odessa. Hello, everyone. Welcome to welcome to the webinar. Okay. All right, guys. Hello. Hey guys. Well, I hope you're going to join us despite the fact that we've been late a little bit. Hey guys. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Afternoon. Hello, hello. All right, guys, what cities you are now, where you are from? Hi, Kiev. Hello. Welcome. Welcome. All right. Okay. Okay, guys. So, um, uh, my question for you now is what unites the ribbons? A lemon. A lemon. A castanet and some business cards, some business cards. What unites all these objects? So, do you have any ideas? So, what unites these things? Okay, so these right you are, right you are, they are realia. And realia, this is the topic, this is the topic of our today's webinar. So the plan of our webinar is we're going to talk what, what realia are and why we use them. We're going to also talk about how we can use them in our classroom management, what, what stages of the lesson. Uh, we can use realia, and uh, we're going to talk also about day-to-day uh, -day realia, what things we could use uh, on a daily basis, so something, something not prepared. And of course, we're going to talk about the topics uh, from uh, our platform and from our book, Notes by Green Forest, that we can use realia for. So this is the plan, let's go. First of all, let's clarify what realia are. Jeremy Harmer said that these are objects from real life that are used to improve students' understanding. As it's something that can be, that can be touched, 
and can be seen perfectly well in any classroom, realia are perfect for visual and kinesthetic learners. They create strong associations um, between words and objects. Of course, strong associations in the combination of strong emotions make our lessons and the process of learning itself memorable. Quite often, we don't even realize that we use Realia all the time. These days, we've got a virtual Realia option, computer or TV screens, projectors, that help our students visualize what we want them to learn. And believe me, we're lucky here in the Green Forest that we've got such opportunities. Having attended Better Learning Conference in Kiev this summer, I realized that not all language schools have such opportunities of virtual realia options. So let's not forget about it. And um, please don't forget also, quite importantly, that we're teaching adults. And some of them might feel as if they're treated childishly. So pay attention to your students, to your group, uh, and don't overdo it. Uh, so uh, first of all, we could use Realia to attract students' attention. Uh, <coughs> so personally, I use this musical instrument. This is a castanet. So this is, it can be used easily. The good thing about it is that you can, uh, you can adjust the sound that you produced as it is a musical instrument. Well, if you decide to use uh, any whistles in your classroom, be careful with them, test them first, not uh, for them not to be annoying or too, too distracting for your students. Okay, another part, another part of um, um, classroom management issue that you could use Realia in is the regrouping process. So you could use, uh, you could use, for example, the ribbons. So how it works? So you could ask your students to come closer to you, choose the ending of your ribbons and when you let go so the students find a partner to work with if you don't have an even number of students in your class you can ask someone to choose two endings instead of one or you could also participate and then join this student to a pair Another good idea to regroup our students is with, uh, with some cards. You could, use, <coughs> you could use a usual deck of cards. Of course, you could pre-teach some language before you, before you do it. So, for example, that these are aces and these are jacks, so you could ask your students to choose a card secretly and then to find a partner according to, uh, to uh, if, if they are aces or jacks, or you, of course, can ask them to find a partner with the same, with the same thing here, yeah? so you can ask them to join according to hearts. So as, as an option for you, of course, do not forget, do not forget about candies, about candies. Well, M and M's work perfectly well. <laughs> so you can also uh, regroup and give your students some, some treat, right? Well, another option, you can, you can be even more creative and you can use any kind of hat that might look similar to Hogwarts sorting hat. Yeah, so you can mime some sounds and you can ask your students to sit down in the middle of the classroom. You put a sorting hat on top and tell them which group they work in. So you can you can use of course this is this is a sombrero, but you could use it you could use it as well as well. Okay. And as winter winter has is coming or has uh, has <laughs> is approaching us, you could also regroup your students with uh, 
with, uh, with some tangerines, so where you could uh, write some vocabulary or, um, or whatever you can think of. So here I have two uh, antonyms, so merits, demerits, so you could, you, could uh, ask, you could ask your students to choose a tangerine and then to find a partner to find a partner with the opposite word, word with an opposite meaning, or with a synonym, so as, as you wish, as you wish. Okay, guys, uh, <coughs> if, you have, if you have any ideas on, uh, on other ideas on regrouping your students with some realia, with some real life ob objects, so you're welcome to share it with us uh, in our chat. Okay, well, uh, another part of classroom management uh, is punishment and praise. Well, you could uh, praise your students with our Green Forest stickers. Don't forget about it. That's cool. Some students enjoy collecting, collecting them and always ask it for, for more, for different, for different stickers. So they have collections. I sometimes uh, use um, the stamps. So you, you're going to need uh, some ink and some stamps. I personally have a small collection of, but still, so it's panda flip-flops. So quite nice. So students enjoy getting it as um, for the good uh, homework, completed homework, or for the good job during the lessons. And talking about punishment, so what can we punish our students for? Russian, of course, sometimes happens, so I suppose it's quite, uh, quite an issue sometimes. Well, why, uh, there are lots of ideas how to do it without using realia, but uh, you, could, you, could think of <coughs> you could think of some uh, something like um, some glasses. If your student uses Russian, I would ask him to wear sunglasses until he stops. Yeah, so when uh, to work uh, to work in sunglasses inside, yeah, you know, inside the building, it's a bit mm, for me not comfortable. So for me, it would be punishment. Uh, but uh, maybe for some of your students, it's gonna be fun. So again, be careful what you what you give, what you think of when you, uh, when you use this. Uh, but you can also uh, be quite radical in this relation, I mean punishment for Russian. So uh, you, can, you can, some of my colleagues came up with this idea. So actually this is a jar with money that the teacher collects after each usage of, of Russian, well, of course, this money will be uh, will be used wisely. So at the end of uh, at the end of the course, uh, the teacher is going to buy something for the whole group or something. So as you can see, some students are generous. So. <laughs> well, okay, but it's it's quite radical. Uh, though uh, you're welcome to to use it. Wow, yeah, paper clips, paper clips, buttons. Um, well, lots of lots of small but nice things uh, can be used. Uh, different colors for regrouping, right? Um, okay, the question about the stamps. Well, you could buy it at a stationery. So uh, some some of uh, some of the chain stationeries uh, provide us that, so you can just um, ask around, or uh, or I can just share uh, the name of the shop uh, I bought it from in uh, in, in Odessa. Uh, matryoshkas could be punished. Wow, what way? <laughs> Would be nice to know more about matryoshkas. So it's it, it's an, it's an idea. Uh, but should be developed. So could you please, could you please share, Paul? All right. So of course, um, we also uh, after each uh, activity, we have to um, take some feedback, get some feedback from our students. Of course, usually we nom nominate to to get uh, to get the answer or to um, to um, so to ask our students to share uh, what they found out. But you could also use a ball or a toy 
so you are not involved in the process of feedback. What I mean, for example, so I ask one student uh, to uh, to give me the answer to one to one uh, question or to give me uh, the answer to a task, uh, one of them, and then uh, this student passes passes the toy or uh, or a ball to another student. So, uh, so you do not nominate. Actually, the students nominate each other themselves. Yeah. So the chain continues, and actually, you check the task. You check. You finish up checking the task without naming anyone. So they do it themselves. If they are used to this activity, so sometimes when you uh, throw the ball to someone, they even know what they have to do. So at at times, no instructions are needed if, if they're acquainted with, with the task, uh, with, with the process. All right, so now let's talk about, uh, <coughs> we, we, let's talk about the stages of the lesson uh, we use Realia uh, for. So of course, the lead in, yeah, the lead in. For example, uh, if we take the topic of predictions, uh, the topic, uh, the grammar topic at the pre-intermediate level, will, might, or may. Uh, so um, you can think of uh, giving your students some uh, fortune-telling cookies. Well, I didn't have cookies to tell you the truth, so I created my own fortune-telling candies. So I just added uh, small pieces of paper to a candy with the uh, with a prediction, so you uh, you uh, you will definitely um, find a, a new love this year or something like that. So uh, it was fun for them to to open it up, and they didn't even realize that they at this moment of uh, discussing their predictions of eating a candy, they were noticing grammar. So that was like uh, uh, leading into the grammar topic. Uh, another topic that is perfect for using Realia, this is traveling. So again, if we talk about lead-in, so you could use some, uh, some magnets that you brought, or you could use uh, some other Realia, it could be um, airline tickets, it could be some entry tickets, or um, bus tram tickets from different countries. It can be a leaflet to a museum. So you can distribute this to your students and ask them to uh, guess the um, to guess the topic or to think of what happened to you, what has happened recently to you, um, etc. Another idea with uh, with traveling, so you could you could go with with this paper planes so you could uh, ask them to play a little bit and uh, when you give a signal they finish so they could open the paper paper plane and find the name of the city or a country so they are traveling to again uh, another thing that you could use for traveling leading. Uh, if uh, if we uh, want to make some interesting grammar or vocabulary presentation, so you could also the same the same thing. You could use some travel items, or if we talk about the, uh, hobbies, this is again the pre-intermediate topic uh, in our communication classes. Well, in intensive courses too, of course. So uh, you could bring some things that represent different hobbies. So it could be some knitting threads or origami stuff or some paints. So again, so you can present uh, this topic easily and pretty quickly to tell you the truth. These also can be used afterwards at the checking, up, checking of understanding stage uh, or even at practice stage. Uh, in notes by Green Forest, this topic of hobbies is united with the topic of preferences. So you could then ask your students to to take one item and to discuss with a partner how they like it. Are you are they keen on it, or they can stand doing something? So 
you can use uh, Realia not only once during, uh, during one class. Another perfect topic that is made for using Realia is food, right? Okay, so you could go crazy and bring lots of stuff. <laughs> But uh, you could uh, uh, you could be pretty uh, you could be pretty okay with only some issues. So uh, it could be the lemon. Remember the the thing we started with. <coughs> so um, or you can go again with chocolate. Yeah. So you can you can ask your students even to try it with uh, with the eyes closed. So the lemon is sour, yeah, so the chocolate is sweet, you can bring something really hot and spicy. But again, remember uh, what I have already mentioned, do it with the groups you are sure in, yeah, so with people who take it with enthusiasm, so only you know your students. Okay, food, uh, so you could, uh, if the topic of food is usually combined with the grammar topic countable, or uncountable, right? Okay, so here this topic is perfect for reality, I should say. So it can be used in any level, right? So elementary, pre-intermediate, and sometimes even at upper intermediate. Let me show what I mean. So uh, of course you can uh, you can ask your students. So I've got I've got some water. Yeah. So. Yeah, so you can ask, so is, is water many or much? So much water. Um, well, now you can ask, is it enough for me now for this lesson? So then they can say, okay, so you've got a little water, right? Or if, if you just show them that, okay, now it's little water yeah so not not enough really for for one person for one hour i don't know something like that and another another thing so uh, compared to water that is uncountable you can talk about candies yeah that is like one candy two candies or if you have a bar of chocolate so you can you can teach them chocolate that it's uncountable and a bar so it's again so you can use lots of stuff the same thing with coffee and tea sometimes you don't need even bring this realia from home because we have it in our green forest kitchens right so so you can find some tea or you can find some coffee well in this case the coffee is uh is perfect so um these are coffee sticks, so you can count them, but you cannot um, uncount coffee. So, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, another good topic that um, that we have for realia. These are the prepositions of place, right? So again, you can use a ball, or you can use your favorite toy. This is my Mr. Penguin. Some students know know uh, know it pretty well. So you can uh, again relate to. Um, to this Mr. Penguin and some uh, equipment around your class. So above the table, underneath the table, yeah. So next to the teacher. So you can you can use this instead of the pictures that we usually show in our presentations, uh, in our PowerPoint presentations. Okay. Of course, the topic of cloths. Well. Again, so it's absolutely up to you. You could bring some clothes into class. In, so the topic of clothes, patterns, colors um, <coughs> is just perfect for it. And what's cool about it that uh, this can be used at different levels. So depending what you teach. Yeah. So what's the target language? Uh, when we talk about check of understanding, here you could use realia too. So uh, if we talk about comparisons, it's perfect for any level, including advanced. You could find some, you could find some uh, books in uh, in your teacher's library. So you could compare. So the book, this book is thin. This is thick. So you can ask your students so. Uh, to compare so this book is much thicker right 
or loads thicker. So here you go. Uh, you can also use the matches. Yeah, of course, if you could find the longer ones would be great. I, I just didn't. So here you can you can just uh, you can show them two, one one short, one long. Again, and ask them to compare. And what's um, this topic is also nice because you can just compare people themselves. You can invite some students and uh, start comparing them. So, for example, I'm short. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm short. You can say, okay, Masha is as short as I am, or it is much, much taller than I am, and and uh, Vera is the tallest of all in the group. Yeah. So you could you could use uh, even even your own students. Well, another perfect, uh, another perfect topic is um, have something done. Yeah, so this is, this is upper intermediate grammar topic. So uh, in, this, in this relation, I usually use the business cards, the business cards. So um, I distribute or ask my students to choose any card and when they choose it, they need to make a sentence. I can give them the tense that I want them to use. Yes, yeah, so like I'm having my nails done, or um, yesterday, yes, I I had uh, I had my car fixed. So you could you could ask them. You can uh, make it freer, so you can ask them just to just to describe the car they see, the service, and then you can do some transformation drilling or substitution drilling. So so they continue using different forms of of your of your grammar topic. Okay, another topic, another grammar topic that you can check understanding with different things, it's uh, passive voice. So you could, again, uh, we go back to, to my famous t-shirt. So why famous? Because lots of people have, have already have already uh, seen it before a lot. So, okay, so you can say, well, where you can ask, you can set the question. So, where is where 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 do we where where do they make where do they produce the T-shirt? Uh, they will they will give you the answer. So, okay, so the T-shirt is made, yeah, or is produced. And uh, well, you could also use Mr. Penguin again. So you could, you could, oh, I'm hugging him. So Mr. Penguin, right, yeah, he's being hugged, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You could also uh, use your phone. This is basically, uh, we've come to the, uh, we've come to the point of day-to-day -day, uh, realia. Yes, it's some, some objects that you don't uh, even need to bring um, on a special occasion. So you just, you can just say, oh, I, I've just got a call, so, yeah, so a call has been made, or just I'm texting the message, so the message is being texting. Yeah, so again, you can, you can use this. Um, uh, what else? So, right, so we, uh, we talked about leading, presentation, check of understanding, and of course now let's talk about freer practice or our production tasks. Okay, uh, again, let me go back to uh, the upper intermediate uh, grammar class. So, um, past models of deduction. Basically, basically, lots of topics of speculation and deduction are perfectly made for using realia. So, I, uh, I printed some photos. I hope you can you can see them. So um, this is um, this activity is called crime scene investigation. So this is uh, this this picture and this crime scene was made um, on the stairs. So inside the building, and my students had to come up with some ideas uh, what might have happened, what must have happened. Yeah, so actually, I used it as a woman next time, but you can use it. Uh, you can use it at the end of your lesson, so they speculate. You can make it more controlled, so giving them some prompts, or it can be absolutely free, or so. So it's it's up to you. 
Um, another topic that is perfect uh, is uh, future predictions, so pre-intermediate, intermediate, upper-intermediate upper level. So uh, in Green Forest Odessa, we used to roll cards a lot uh, to, uh, to give our students uh, uh, the feeling, uh, so, so to provoke their interest and to make them work more willingly on the topic and to uh, think of some, some funny or serious predictions for their partners. Uh, if we talk about some deduction, uh, so uh, when we use could, might, so you could, uh, you could give your students some envelopes. Well, these are not simple white envelopes. Um, so there are some spices inside. Yeah, so you could ask your students to open it and smell it. Okay, it, it, might, be, it might be pepper. Well, it's definitely pepper. So pepper, it's pepper, right? Um, okay. Oh, careful. Should be careful. Um, okay. All right. Well, this is cinnamon. But oh, I didn't use the target language. Yeah, it's definitely. I'm one hundred percent sure it's it's cinnamon. Okay. So so you could you could use it like that. All right. Um, well, I talked a lot about grammar, right? Uh, but you could also use Valia for functional language. So uh, you could um, you could use a map, a map of the city. Uh, so um, it's well the most real life activity, I suppose. One of the most real life activities. So we talk, when we talk about giving directions, um, the last activity that I usually give is a freer, freer production. So I give them the maps. So they really work with the real city, with the, in the real situation. Well, uh, actually, Odessa is a touristic city, so it's always useful. So then they feel more confident when they meet a tourist or two. Uh, in the streets, so they know how to how to help them. Another uh, another thing that you could add, not just based on reality, but you could add some elements. Uh, this is personal, my personal favorite. This is alibi game for narrative tenses. Could be used for intermediate or upper intermediate students. Of course, it's a bit time consuming, but um, I usually add some spices. I bring a gun and some money, and I um, put uh, this into the back of one of the suspects. So you cannot believe how eager students become to uh, to think of um, to think of uh, uh, what they're gonna uh, what they're gonna say, how they're gonna lie. Or what alibi? What's alibi? They're gonna think of. So um, this really adds to. And at the end, and in the end, so uh, the uh, investigators um, can check the bag of the suspect they think uh, who they think gu uh, is guilty. And if they lose, if they are not right, but if they open the bag and they see this, of course, the investigators and the police has won. So, so here is like a nice, a nice element to, to this beautiful, uh, to this beautiful activity. Okay. Don't forget, please, that you can ask your students to create their own realia. If you have the topic of um, ordering food or drinks. Uh, go into the restaurant or cafe, you can ask your students to create their own menu. And then when they bring, uh, they, they bring their menus next lesson, you can ask them to role play, go into their place. So actually this is kind of a project together with, with the reality created by your students. Talking about functional language, of course, uh, you could diversify your role plays. So if you go to a shop, you could um, you could ask some, uh, the students who play the role of uh, shop assistants to wear the badge 
So, or if uh, if uh, we talk about if we role play some situation at the airport, you can create some tables with the names of airlines, or ask your students to bring their bags uh, if they play the role of a passenger. So, this small element really creates the real life situation. Students start feeling in a different way, and they. They, 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 they feel much better. They feel uh, the why they, they understand why they are using and they are learning what you are teaching them. Uh, day to day reality. I've already mentioned some uh, some moments that you could use some stuff from uh, rainforest, uh, library, or kitchen. Uh, but of course, something it will fall. So. Uh, it was quite a memorable uh, moment, and actually lots of students remember it. Uh, and while they were discussing or explaining the same thing to other students, they were discussing it. So, oh, remember that marker that was about to fall. So, so here you go, some memorable moments. Of course, you could also use students' coats. So if you talk about, uh, if you talk about cloths, if you talk about patterns, so students' um, what, what students wear, students' outfits, the coats, uh, their bags. You could also use your own bag if you are teaching, if you're teaching some everyday objects for your elementary or starter um, students. Well, uh, again, you can also uh, uh, ask students to bring their own realia. When we ask them to bring a photo or a picture of an art uh, artwork, or the following art auction or something else. So again, you are asking them to work with reality and actually they, 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 bring, they bring it into your class. Uh, if, um, if guys, you have some other ideas on, uh, on realia usage, so you can, uh, you can also uh, share it with us in the chat. So day-to-day um, -day reality, maybe you're using uh, something else, not only the markers and the phone, so if you're ready to share, so please, please do not hesitate. And uh, as promised, uh, I also uh, want to mention the topics uh, from Notes by Green Forest that are, uh, that are good for using Realia. So, uh, for example, in the intermediate and advanced uh, Notes by Green Forest, we have the topic of some uh, some past or vintage stuff, so you can also use use these topics. You can find some old floppies or cassettes or MP3 player. Or even this, even this piece of technology is a bit out of date today. So traveling, as I have already mentioned, traveling, future predictions, deductions, passive voice works perfectly well. Um, at intermediate, at pre-intermediate and upper intermediate levels, so uh, checked by myself. Uh, clothes, foods, containers, of course. So you could you could bring some, you could bring a lot. Uh, some cartons, jars, glasses. So it's uh, again, you can find most of these in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, well, please don't forget that uh, when you prepare for the lesson. First thing that uh, we, we, uh, we look for lots of pictures, we try to make our presentations nice, colorful, uh, but when you do it, so ask yourself, do I have any real objects that I can use, so instead of the pictures? So if the answer is positive, so try to use it. But again, as, as Jeremy Harmer mentioned in his book, don't overdo it, but it's cool to uh, from time to time, it's cool to use to use them. Um, what realia do you guys use in your class? So maybe you, I've already mentioned something that you use, but maybe you have you have your own objects that you'd like to that you'd like to share. So please, please uh, message. Okay, so uh, when you was it realia for present perfect? Uh, aha, so the topic, uh, the grammar topic. Aha, okay. 
Mm, how could you? Uh, what what objects do you bring for for teaching present perfect? Health. Wow. Yeah. Health. Why? Yeah. If if you have if you have the objects if you have reality, yeah, why not? Right. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, yeah, drawn pictures, bottles, tickets. Okay, earphones and headphones for comparison. Okay, that's interesting. All right, All right, great. Well, you see, the ideas are so many. Cool. That's great. Okay, guys. Well, I hope uh, this webinar has been useful for you. I hope you can find some ideas or some inspiration to, to use Reality in your, in your classes. So thank you very much for, for being with us today. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed tremendously. So. Have, ni have nice lessons, enjoy, and see you somewhere around. Goodbye.